Hello and welcome to this new video. Today I'm gonna show you how I installed Home Assistant on a Mac Mini M2 Pro. It's probably clearly overkill to get that on a M2 Pro, but honestly, it's very fast and running very smooth as you can expect. I'm using UTM for virtualization, so I have a new virtual machine just for Home Assistant. I try with parallel desktop, but I, but I never managed to boot Home Assistant, so that's why today I will focus on UTM. You can also go bare metal if you wish, and that will probably be a better choice, but in my configuration I'm using Docker and Plex and other services. I want to isolate my virtual machine of Home Assistant from the IoT network, so that's why I'm using UTM. Anyway, coming back to Home Assistant, I assume you know about it. It's very great. Like, I absolutely love it. You can connect so many devices together, like Z Music, Z Web, or Zigbee, or Wi Fi, or whatever. I hope you don't mind the mess on my dashboard. Like, it's very messy, but I didn't have time recently to work on it. But I prefer the first version I showed you at the very beginning of this video. By the way, sorry about my horrible French accent. <laughs> I hope you can get over it. Anyway, I'm gonna show you my uh, hardware. So I'm using a Mac Mini M2 Pro. The M.2 SSD is just for Plex, so don't mind it, but all other devices are for Home Assistant. So as you can see, I do use G-Web, so I have a IOTech Z67. It's quite handy. I also have a Ethernet to Thunderbolt because I don't want to share the same network from macOS to the VM. So the VM is using the adapter and I have Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 for Zigbee device. I also have a UPC for security because I have my uh, alarm system and everything on Home Assistant so I don't want to be offline if there is an issue with electricity. I do have Wi-Fi and Unify connect to the same UPC, so I won't be offline in case of issue. As you can see, the UPC is natively detected by macOS, so if there is a power failure, then I have a warning straight away. Don't mind my Apple script, it's something I use for automatization. Anyway, we go into the Home Assistant website. We're gonna download the, the Arch64 QCOW2. So, Bear in mind that you need at least 2 GB of RAM and 2 V CPU, so virtual CPU. I think I did with less and it worked fine, but you know, that's what they recommend, so why not? So we're gonna download the correct image, so it's very fast for me because I have 8 GB per second internet, and we're gonna unzip the file. It's gonna take quite some time uh, for information I have, like different virtual machine and um, docker and other stuff on running on this Mac Mini so it's quite some time. And then you can get rid of this spy and just keep the new one. And we're gonna open UTM and create a new virtual machine. Do select virtualize and then other and skip ISO boot. And you're free to select how much memory you want to use and CPU and continue, continue and save. So we're gonna go back to edit and a network. I use my own uh, adapter, so I remove it, but feel free to use your network as you want. I'm gonna delete this drive and click new, and I'm gonna import the image we just downloaded. save and I'm gonna go back again in the settings and I'm gonna resize the hard drive so here resize I'm gonna make 64 in my case so resize and save now you're free to start the VM it should be fast enough Bear in mind that I'm using other VM and Docker, so that not is not as fast, but it's still not too bad. There we go. So now we have our assistant started. We're gonna have the URL here, which should show in a second now. 
there we go so it's 192.168.64.5 and if i remember the port for our systems is 813 easy enough and continue to site so if you do have a backup you should select the backup from now i can show you in a minute how to backup but you probably already know so i'm going on settings and system and then backup and create backup so you feel free to create a full backup which i would recommend but you also can create a partial backup and perhaps only get some add-on or some files so that that's actually quite handy if you want to start from scratch but you want to keep some add-on and stuff it's gonna take some time for me because like my configuration is pretty heavy <laughs> i have a lot of stuff i do use not red a lot and i would recommend um, i have so many optimization through not red actually most of them are in not red and you can add you Z-Web and Zigbee device air or Ethernet. Uh, it's not straight up air because I'm running another VM at the moment. This is a, another production one. And when the backup is complete, save it in your computer. So download and it should take quite some time actually. This depends obviously of your file and setup. So you uh, my not red so don't mind the mess i do use for everything like for my alarm or for the light for the electric shelters like basically everything on my home assistant is through not red i have barely nothing on home assistant automatization like i do love not red you can do a lot of things with not red like it's impressive really By the way, you can add node red from settings and add on, add on store, and then look for node red. And now you're free to set up all your flow. So for your door, for example, if you open or close the door, you can lock. You lock, <laughs> and you can do many stuff like closing the shutters. Uh, it's up to you. Sky is the limit, really. <laughs> anyway, sorry again about my horrible English accent. Thank you for watching this video, and you will find all the links inside the description. Anyway, thank you so much.